Hi everyone, this is Eric Grotebois, 5 Minutes with Eric. We're going to continue the one minute I just did talking about non-competes. And the reason is because we are signing up cases left and right. Now, at our firm here, we represent business owners primarily, but also we represent a lot of um, independent people or maybe workers. So here's your fact pattern. Somebody is has left their previous employment and they start working for a new employee an employer and then the new employer gets a letter in the mail and separately the former employee of the old employer gets a letter in the mail and what they're saying to the to the employee is you had a non-compete which is typically a signed agreement now it's almost there's almost no example where somebody can have an implied non-compete it's got to be in writing and it's got to be an enforceable contract and unfortunately here in florida it seems like the courts will bend themselves backwards in order to make it enforceable and i'll talk about that a little bit later on but the point is the employee the former employee gets a letter that says hey we've heard that you're competing or we've heard that you are engaging in a violation of your agreement and now these agreements will often have a lot of different provisions and we call them collectively restrictive covenants so confidentiality or non-disclosure right that's one of them um, how about non-solicitation? That's specifically, you can't go after your old clients. Non-interference, you can't go try to convince our other employees to quit. Non-compete, that's gonna be very broad. That's gonna be, you can't even engage in the same activity that competes with our business. And typically in a non-compete, you're gonna have three restrictions. You're gonna have the geography, so maybe it'll be five miles as the crow flies, or maybe it'll be a county, or maybe it'll be a state or a region. Um, second, you're going to have the duration. So is it a year? Is it two years? Is it five years, et cetera? And then thirdly, you'll have the actual prohibited activity. So you, broadly, it could say you can't compete with us, or it might be more specific. You can't compete with us in medical sales. I just use that one as an example. Okay. And so that's the demand letter that's going to be sent to the former employee. And then at the same time, they're going to send a demand letter to the new employer. And it's going to say, Hey, you might not have known this. But the person you just hired had a non-compete or a non-solicitation or whatever it is, an agreement with us. And now we think that they're violating it. So now you're on notice that I can sue you too for what's called tortious interference with a business relationship. So you are helping that guy breach his contract with me. And even though you were never a party to that contract, that's actually a cause of action in the law. Um, it's not the strongest cause of action, but it's a cause of action. And so a lot of times both parties, if there is a lawsuit, will get sued at the same time. And then often the company will get a bigger law firm. The employee will get a smaller law firm. They'll usually collaborate together because they're on the same side. Now, here's an important point. A lot of times company number two will know about the non-compete and be willing to take the risk and maybe be willing to litigate it and maybe be willing to pay whatever the settlement is because maybe the benefit of hiring this person with all their special skills and talents or client lists or vendor lists, whatever it is they have is worth it. And maybe there's a price that company number one is willing to accept to make it go away. Um, so listen, we've seen it on all sides. I mentioned earlier that the courts will bend over backwards. Here in Florida, the courts are supposed to blue line one of those contracts. So let me talk this through. Under normal contract law, if a provision of a contract is considered to be invalid, the whole contract's invalid. So here's an example. Let's say I make an employee sign a non-compete with a 200 mile radius, right? And now 200 miles, let's get serious. Nobody's driving 200 miles to commute to work. So the judge is supposed to take out his blue pen and he's supposed to, he or she is supposed to cross out the 200 and maybe make it 20 or maybe make it 10 or maybe make it five or whatever they think is reasonable to, to effectively have a restraint on trade that doesn't disadvantage too many parties involved. And there are a lot of parties involved. There's all the parties we talked about, plus the public at large. So interesting side note, in the law here in Florida, lawyers cannot be forced to sign non-competes because that would restrict the public's ability to get the best lawyers that they need to protect them or to hire them or to work on their cases. So you could imagine an evil company that hires every lawyer in the state, makes them all sign non-competes, and then effectively no, no other company could ever sue them because they could never hire a lawyer because they're all non-competed. Obviously, that's an extreme example, but that's where, where the idea goes. Now, I think the FTC could make a reasonable compromise. So the example I like is a restaurant. Imagine everything from the busboy and the hostess to the line cooks and the waiters to eventually the general manager. 
I think the general manager, I think if they're paid enough money and they have enough responsibility, they could be restricted. You could say, hey, I don't want you taking your customer list and going across the street and working. But literally, we're going to make the busboys sign non-competes. And unfortunately, a lot of those restaurants out there on South Beach, they're doing that. They're making the busboys sign non-competes, which I think is ridiculous. And I think that could be the compromise at the FTC. They could say non-competes for unsophisticated people are invalid, but competes for sophisticated people. So we have a case right now where a guy's making, you know, nice six figures and they're concerned that he has their entire customer list and all the parties involved are willing to litigate it very, very, very difficultly. But at the same time, somebody who's making less than $40,000 a year, maybe it's not fair to make them sign a non-compete. All right, guys, this is Eric Rodebaugh. If you have any questions about non-competes, give me a call.